<laughs> Remember the it's shake weight? Shake weight. The little shake weight, and you're like, right, and it's like working this down. It. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's hard. Right no. Now. Anyway, I'm you agree. you feel like you're warmed up. Yeah. It's core, Brant. You have to have strong core. All right. They lock in. JV. He locks in. He's like this. Don't don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't do any of it without it. Just. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go talk about woodworking machines. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. Talk about the chop. The chop? The chop. Need more output, more capacity. Oh. Need more wood. Are we getting more a new machine? Maybe. Mick and Josh working the chop. Is that a mullet? I think so. A mullet. Wow. That's a mullet. That is a mullet light. Yes. A, a wood Stonehenge. So when you get to this level of machinery, it's not a machine. Mm -hmm. It is many machines working together to accomplish a task. Yep. So here we've got the, these are the chop in feeders, out feeders, all of this is to take these long boards and chop them. Chop them. Chop them to the appropriate link. Chop. Master chop. Are we gonna get a new chop system? Uh, all right. We're thinking of it. Okay. Give Brant a little tour of your world. All right. So, uh, put the wood down there. Put it on deck after marking it up. Right here for applause. They'll pick that up. You'll see where there's waste, where there isn't. Out here over there. We'll put it on the proper pallets, either as a product or as a block, if we're going to use it later. It's a pretty safe system. We have a sensor that will stop. I have my hand there. It won't come back down. Um, so I'm, cool. Yeah. I'll break my arm. I want to that Right, so that, that like a uh, Roomba looking thing. Is, is what is pushing the board, yeah. and then it's jump cutting. So, this I believe is called a push feed system, meaning that the board is pushed through and chopped as it's pushed through. We're looking to upgrade this from a push feed to a roll feed. So the board is clamped between rollers, and then the rollers speed it through. Boop, 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 boop. We looked at this machine at the woodworking conference we went to. Okay. Uh, I'll show you, a, show you a clip of it. It chops off. You, you gotta try to get a video of how fast it cuts the board. It's a whole different animal. They run it. Whoa, whoa, you missed it. Whoa, 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 way faster. Yeah. Once John gets here, he'll explain John Morris. So he's our primary machinery dealer. He is the, we're gonna get a sales presentation. Oh, great. We currently believe, I actually think it's actually now been proven, this cell is the bottleneck in our company. Mm. So it goes raw lumber, rip, chop. Don't get skip. It's true, there is a skip. Skip plane, rip saw, chop. Mm -hmm. That rip saw can run way faster than this chop. Yep. This chop is the first bottleneck in our production mm. process. Hey, yo. Hey, hey Ian. What's up? Do you, do you agree with this statement? Chopping is currently the bottleneck to our production process. Currently. Yes. Yeah, theoretically, that is what we currently yes. believe. Yep. Correct. We need to chop more. Because we need to chop more, we're chopping day shift and evening shift. And we're chopping day shift and evening shift and weekend shift. Yes. This is this is what peak performance looks like. Let's take a zoom in on that. How are you doing? I'm good. Hi. Hello. Let's get some vocabulary. This saw is a push feed. This is a push feed. This is a push feed optimizing chop saw Correct. system. Correct. There we go. The push feed saw and a through feed saw, you'll never have the speed in a push feed saw that you would in a through feed saw. Now, I believe we like these saws, generally. Yeah. Well, these have yep, been, they work, they work well. I don't hear a lot of complaints about these machines. Quite durable, quite reliable, they're accurate. Yep, yep, they're accurate. 
And yeah, and we just need more. How much was the purchase price on this? Good. You probably paid for that saw, I'm going to say $100,000. Gotcha. So this is 100 k that's 100 k Correct. Oh, but really? if we go into the marketplace with these two saws, you're probably going to get 100 to 110 For both of them? For both. So that'd be like 50 k a saw. That's, be that's better than my Tesla. I mean, you're into it for 100 you got to utilize it every day. Right? That's true. Well, it's almost and like a car. It's like you go in to buy a new car, there's a trade-in on your old car. Absolutely. That's basically the same idea. There's a trade-in on these chops if we upgrade to a new, faster chop. What is your favorite thing about this, these saws and least favorite thing about these saws? Favorite thing about the saws, uh, besides the fact that it's the safest, probably the safest machine in the building, I love how straightforward it is. Uh, my least favorite thing about the chop is that conveyor belt. <laughs> No, really, this conveyor belt. There's I will say, the, the thing we have the most trouble with with this is the conveyor belts. Oh, yeah. Last question oh. internet is going to want to know. Yeah. How long did it take you to grow that mustache? The mustache? We watched Three Musketeers in October. It's been less than, I'm going to say, less than a financial quarter. <laughs> like four months tops. Yeah. Four months. That's not long. That is a month. fucking set. Dude, like, what are the plans? Like, where does it go from here? Like, that is, like, what what is what does the future look like for your mustache? I'm just gonna keep it, like, going the curved up, do yep. the whole swashbuckler thing, and eventually, once it gets warmer, shave down the sides of no. the beard, just go full pointed uh, goatee with the mustache. Oh my god. Full musketeer. It's the only upside of being French, is you get to grow the musketeer <laughs> facial hair. Is that it? it? There's some culinary upsides. Oh. Right, see, that's the thing, the Portuguese aren't known for their mustaches. They that's the problem. Just look at this nice Florida tan. That is a Florida <laughs> tan right there. Hey, John, how, hey, are you? how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Can we afford a $400,000 machine? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. Machine financing's not cheaper than back in 20, when, 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 when we it bought this machine, when we built this machine, they were given money away from the banks. The thing about these machinery loans is they use, I believe they use the machine as That's an asset in the loan. That's correct. Yeah, so these are still being financed. Right? I believe these probably have one year left on the note. One year left on the note, you just buy out the loan, yeah. buy out the lease, right. right? And by the way, Can their value is- that and you add it to I'm sorry? Well, let's, we'll talk about it later. Considerable difference between one and the other. Right? I have no idea. I just yeah. want to go faster. If that's the real problem, then I think what we will present to you today is a pretty good path to getting there, right? We'll find out. Yeah. We filmed one of these machines before, I think, in a worm life. I'm just going to bring it up. This is it feeding through. And those and are literally a stop. And these are the chops. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Right? You've got two things going on. You've got the board is feeding through. Yeah. Okay. And that's feeding through very quickly. Very quickly. And then the other aspect is how quickly the blade can extend and contract. Is that chop saw chopping while it's moving? Or is the board the board is stopping? Stop. But it doesn't look like it is. No. Just so fast. Are you serious? You're in a fraction of a second. Like I cannot move my hand. Like I know it's so fast. Jason, this is I can move my hand that fast. It doesn't like move with the wood. It's not like no, no, and that's been attempted. It just never works. That's it, a lot of inertia to like, and that's what it is. It's mechanics. Right? So how is it moving the board? To my understanding, acceleration and deceleration of the board is purely servo motors. Totally lost. <laughs> you lost me. Servo motor. It's a servo motor, not a normal motor. It's a servo motor. Pinch rollers, basically. It's like a mold. Yeah, it's like a roller that, feed. How's that roller driven? How are you turning that roller, right? Because not only do you have to accelerate and decelerate, you have to be sure of where that board is. You have to yeah. be sure that you uh, advanced at a certain yeah. amount, so right? Like an you actually need, you've got to have an encoder on it. You've got to have something that tells you, I've got to advance this much, right. and advance it that much and oh, stop it again. I understand what a motor is. You flick a thing, and a thing spins, and you yeah. flick a thing off, and it eventually stops spinning. Yeah. A servo motor has the ability to know where it is. It has an encoder. So it, it has an encoder, oh, so it knows the, the position. Itself. That's how CNC's, most of them, know where the carriage is. Because it's like, the carriage is moving like this, but a motor is actually making it do that. We've gotten to the point where I don't quite understand how the wood moves, but let's, I'm gonna take for a leap and say yes. Okay, I understand 
the wood is now moving. It is then stopping, and a blade is coming up and then retracting. That's amazing in and of How? That how does it get? Yeah. Ja Jason, come the look. Physics, no, the physics Jason, are come look at this. I know inertia. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, a big saw this. with a look big at motor. Look at this. Look no, at this. I look know. At this. Look, at this. look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. How? How? Well, what? You're controlling the stroke. But no, but what is. Servo motor. It's fucking crazy. Doesn't make any sense. I'm going to diagram what I think is going on. Okay. And then you can tell me where I'm wrong. Right? You have a saw. Yeah. So this is the dish, 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 dish. That's the saw. After the saw, I'm going to create an area here called the sort. Yep. Before the saw, we have some sort of thing called the mark or that we call it the grade. Before it goes to the saw, either through technology or meat popsicles, we have to mark up the defecting, yep. right? And then before that, there's also, I'm gonna call this, I don't know, maybe staging, or there's like some sort of input. Yep. Or staging. Yep. Let's go upstream of the saw. Upstream hang on, of- Hang on though, because what we oh. didn't do, there is a piece in here that oh. we don't have in here yet. Oh, what am I missing? You are missing the smart belt. Yep. I'm gonna modify mine. So before, after the marking and grading, I'm just gonna erase this. So in here we have what's called a smart belt. So then what is the smart belt doing before the saw? A, it's capable of getting the board started and stopped, right? As well, because you've gotta feed this saw, right? The control mm. of the ack and deck of the board is in the saw itself. Right. right? And you gotta know where it is, right? The smart belt is synced to the saw in Correct. the same way the sort belt Correct. is synced to the Correct. saw. The marking station will feed the smart belt. There's a future upgrade where we replace the marking station and the people that are doing the marking with more science fiction technology. Correct. So, Depending on the marking strategy that we choose currently, this setup between the input, the mark, the smart belt, the saw, the sort, all in, this is approximately ballpark around 500K. This yep. is around 500K. Now, you had mentioned that you can automate the marking process. Instead of having people marking the boards, we can scan. You can scan. If we wanted to take this marking station and make it completely automated, double, double that yeah. alone would cost 500K. What? That seems crazy to me. For a camera? You're buying the technology, you're not buying the hardware. Right? Yeah, you're, you're buying no shit we are. <laughs> so literally, the automation of the in-feed of the saw is actually in some ways more expensive than the saw itself. Oh, that's so interesting. Right. It's a lot. Where are we gonna put this thing? This thing's huge. Look at this picture. Look how little the people are. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's a person. <laughs> that's a person. These dots are the people. This is the system. What's the full length on? This? Right. That's the system. This is very long. This is a hundred feet long and fifteen feet wide. Mike, where would you even put this thing? In our new building. <laughs> oh, are we gonna do it? I don't know if we're gonna do it. There's cash considerations. So that's that's the first thing, cash. Can we afford it from a cash perspective? Then there's a question of, will it materially increase output? Well, there's a third scenario where we increase throughput here and then somewhere else we hit a bottom line. Right. The glue rack, the finish room, the that CNC's. Is, that's what's it's like, happen. oh cool, 100%. a million dollars. Uh-oh, we need right. a million dollars to open up this bottle there. Uh-oh, we need a million dollars, right? It's like. I think the prudent course of action is we, we just opened up our hours of operation on CHOP. We let that run a few months, maybe maybe a month. Probably I think within a month we'll see the bottleneck. We're running CHOP as hard as we fucking can and we still have a backlog and the sales are still pouring in. I think then you immediately pull the trigger. That's That would be my view. And you immediately pull the trigger. What's the lead time once pulled? Yeah, good. And I mean, subject to change, right? But today, if you ordered uh, that, uh, you're probably looking at having it operational in four months. These are hard decisions. I don't want to spend any more money. Steve, do you want to spend any more money? <laughs> but I also want increased output. <laughs> 
these are the things that are in conflict. The decision isn't entirely based on Massachusetts, actually, because if we turn this up as high as we can, we're, we're going to start moving a whole bunch more stuff to Pennsylvania. If they can't keep up with our output, then we don't need more output. That's true. Where's the? Uh, do you have um? Do you have the card where you get a little, a little, a little punch for every piece of equipment we buy from you? Ooh. <laughs> like where is? We gotta do something. Where is? Yeah. We gotta do something. There was a time. There was a time. I'm gonna put this back on the table. You punched the card a while ago, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 the, the, the free donut is available. This is not a workout. This is a revolution.